Tesla finally has done it. I want to focus more on the positive because despite all of my doom and gloom surrounding the layoffs and the charging team and stuff, I still want to acknowledge that at the end of the day, Tesla does still sell an incredible product that just got even better with the introduction of the long range rear wheel drive Model Y, officially still the first Tesla I ever put down a reservation on. They actually initially promised this way back in 2019 when they unveiled the Model Y and they haven't really ever delivered it in the US until now. And it turns out it's uh, actually not really a new model. It's just a new software that fully unlocks the battery pack that was previously in the standard range Model Y rear wheel drive. And yes, of course, Elon answered our earlier question saying that there will be an option to upgrade the range if you took delivery of one of those standard range rear wheel drive Model Ys. The battery pack in those Model Ys was actually much bigger than Tesla was letting you think. And for 2000 bucks, you can extend your range by an extra 40 to 60 miles. It's weird that Elon said 40 to 60 miles in the tweet though. I'm not sure if he's just leaving in some wiggle room because that real world range varies or if at one point was Tesla actually using physically smaller battery packs in those standard range Model Ys. Maybe they were slightly binned batteries with dummy cells. But we know at least that they're manufactured in the US because that standard range Model Y always qualified for the federal tax credit. It was not LFP. I wrongly reported that way too early. But we did figure out quickly later on when we realized, okay, this is not LFP, what is it? That it was likely a software limited battery pack because the weight was so similar to the long range dual motor Model Y. That's part of the reason I thought it was LFP because the weight was so high. I was like, there's no way they're just shipping this with a smaller battery. Battery. Turns out my suspicions were correct. It's the same battery pack, I believe, as the all-wheel drive variant, and now, of course, just doesn't have the front motor, which saves a bit on weight, improves your efficiency a little bit because there's less passive losses from that front induction motor. And the only downside that kind of kills a lot of the excitement and joy for this particular Model Y trim is the fact that in 2024, EPA kind of reset their range testing calculations. So this new range, which is supposed to be, you know, the best range of a Model Y ever is currently listed at 320 miles, which honestly doesn't sound all that great, especially compared to the more generous test cycles overseas. Because, you know, just a year ago, the all-wheel drive long-range Model Y, which had worse range, it wasn't as efficient, Tesla's own website and the EPA claimed it had a range of 330 miles. In fact, if you go on used inventory on Tesla's site, the older Model Ys are still listed as 330 mile range, whereas this new one, even though it doesn't really say anywhere on the website that, by the way, this is on a different testing cycle and the EPA is a bit more strict now. It says 320 miles, so if the goal was to say, you know, this is the longest range, most efficient Model Y ever, the EPA is kind of, you know, sucking all the fun and joy out of the room. I wish we could have a bit more of a clear, fair test cycle that could be listed on the website because I'm pretty confident that this option that Tesla is now letting people either software unlock through an over-the-air update or just buy now straight from the factory. It's only 2000 dollars more than the standard range, so I'd say it's absolutely worth it. Just for the fact alone that it can peak at 250 kilowatts, and this is a Panasonic built battery pack, so it should have a pretty great charging curve compared to the LG battery packs that they're shipping in the long range Model 3s, the ones that don't qualify for the federal tax credit that have a pretty lousy charging curve. I'm glad they're not using that here, but still, it would be cool if we could see like what the old dual motor Model Y range was compared to this new one, because I bet if we use that old, more generous EPA test cycle, it would probably be closer to like 340, 350 miles of range. Or if we use the more strict EPA test cycle on the older Model Y, it would probably say it was more like 300 miles. And now it gets a more true to life 320, basically putting a crossover at about four miles per kilowatt hour on the dot. Meaning if you're driving the speed limit, the watt hours per mile will be floating around 250, which is great. Although Tesla is still restricting the options a little bit. I should clarify that they take out some speakers and the subwoofer on that partial premium interior found in the rear wheel drive Model Y. I also don't believe they include a parcel shelf on that model, so it's just a bit more of a hatch. Not really any deal breakers in my opinion. I have the partial premium interior on my car and the sound system is still amazing. It's fantastic. I'm no audiophile, but I have cross compared it with the full premium interior sound system with the subwoofer and everything and I didn't find it that noticeable. No, personally, I would not pay the extra money for the all wheel drive. The slightly better sound system and the parcel shelf. I don't think you should factor that into your decision. Mainly just look at, are you focused on efficiency or on range? And if you're worried about the winter and driving around on ice, I encourage you to look up some videos on how 
much your tires actually matter much more to your grip than the actual all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive. Teslas still have a very low center of gravity, and even with a rear-wheel drive Tesla, as long as you've got some snow tires, it should still do pretty well in the cold even without all-wheel drive. So that's just my personal opinion. But the other limitation that they make, and this is probably something to do with Giga Texas versus Fremont production, you cannot get the newly announced Quicksilver Model Y on the rear-wheel drive variant. It is a $2,000 upcharge, so if you're budget conscious, maybe that wasn't the right paint color for you anyway, but I personally really love the Quicksilver look, and I'm so glad that they finally brought it to the United States, but if you do want a Quicksilver Model Y, you have to get an all-wheel drive variant. You can get the performance variant with it as well, but personally, a very close second slash tie when it comes to color preferences that does come with the rear-wheel drive as an option is Ultra Red. Pictures and videos do not do it justice. I highly encourage you to check one out at a showroom if you can. Ultra Red is just such a wonderful candy red that just pops in sunlight. It looks fantastic, and you can still get that on the cheapest Model Y, which is currently, assuming you qualify for the federal tax credit, the cheapest Tesla you can get. And it's crazy to me that the cheapest Tesla you can get has like a 320 mile range and still gets four miles per kilowatt hour, has all of these great features. It's so much insane value that it's almost enough to make you forget that there's a refresh around the corner. There's also no more referral program, so I'm not trying to push any referral credits on you at the moment, but I will admit, if you're already in a position where you're like, man, I really wish I could buy that rear-wheel drive Model Y, I'm just not in a good financial position right now, there are still perks to waiting because all of the same people that were accurate about the reports of the Highland Refresh Model 3 with the ventilated seats, the rear display, the facelift on the outside that improved the aerodynamics, the efficiency, the suspension, so many great improvements that were brought along with the Model 3 refresh. All of those things that leaked earlier are coming from the same people that are now saying Tesla has a refreshed Model Y in the works that's gonna, of course, bring the ventilated seats, the ambient lighting, the rear-mounted display, the more aerodynamic profile, the sleeker profile. All of these things should be launching, hopefully, within the year. They're probably not gonna launch in 2024, but similar to the launch of the refresh Model 3 in the US, I think it will probably be in the first quarter of 2025. So if you see all of those awesome new refresh Model 3 features and that gets you excited, there's a good chance a lot of that stuff is gonna come to the Model Y as well, but could it come with price hikes? Yes, that's possible too. So if you're not that interested in any of those upgrades that are rumored for the refresh, then by all means, I think now is a great time to buy. The vehicles have never been more affordable and now the range options have really never been better, especially for the Model Y. This is an option I've been asking for for a very, very long time and I'm so glad to see Tesla finally offer it. And my next wish, as Tesla is now answering a lot of my wishes, thank you, please bring the rear-wheel drive long-range option to the Model 3 as well. And also put the Panasonic batteries back in. If that Model 3 rear-wheel drive with the big battery pack made by Panasonic, so it has the good charging curve, it qualifies for the federal tax credit, and it would probably get over 350 miles of range, even on the new strict EPA test standard, that would be such an incredible value, and oh my god, they'd be flying off the shelves. But I think a lot of people are ordering refresh Model 3s anyway, so that might be another trick Tesla keeps up their sleeve as a demand lever. Like, oh yeah, if we ever want to sell more Model 3s, just uh, drop the front motor, increase the range, and pop in some US-made batteries. And then we're talking about like a $38,000 car that gets close to 400 miles of range and of course has a great charging curve. Yeah, that thing's gonna sell like madness. But what do you guys think of Tesla's new options? Are you upset at all that they were software locking battery packs for manufacturing efficiency? Or are you glad to see those options come back? I mean, Tesla only charges $2,000 to add an extra 50 miles of range, whereas Rivian charges an extra $10,000 with the max pack. All your thoughts, let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.